Contingency Plan Podcast. My name is Jedi Master David, and with me, finally, is Darth Austin. Hello, everyone. Well, he is back. Back for another podcast. Missed a week, and we'll talk about that here a little bit, but let's go ahead and kick off our all-new podcast. It is an R2-D2 podcast. Wow. Yeah, beep, 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 boop, boop, beep, boop, beep, beep, beep. Nah, it's still a Star Wars reread podcast. We don't care about R two D two. He's not an important character, is I he? Care, kinda, just a little bit. I mean, he's no BB eight, but wow, that's <laughs> controversial right there. Jeez, was that racist? Uh, probably. Well, we've got some news to talk about today. We got a few things to talk about, but uh, we are going to be also jumping into chapter twenty two, turning it back. In Vector Prime of the New Jedi Order of Books, we are getting dangerously close to the end of this particular book, and we'll be looking to the next one. Uh, We have our holidays coming up, so I don't know. How is that all going to work out? I don't even know about time anymore. We're going to record like 300 videos (laughs) in two days. Well, yeah, we definitely not sleep at all. That's what's going to happen. You won't talk. You won't technically hear from us in like six months. We'll just backlog for half a year. Well, it won't be really until <laughs> January, into January when we finish this book, and then we'll do our book recap episode, and then jump into the into the next book in in mid January. So we still got a little bit of time, but yeah, you've got some uh, time off coming, and uh, you know we're gonna get together and and do some do some fun stuff here and there. Yep, finally, time for those bios to start rolling out and yeah, all the other well, good stuff. That's, that's certainly something we've been we've Stop been looking at doing YouTube. as well. Now, yeah, true. <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, let's let's pop into Jedi Council. What's been going on this past week or two? Oh my God, I've been so busy. I had to house sit for like uh, four days. Three kids, yeah, two dogs. So busy sitting no, in the house. No time to do it. <laughs> well, it's kind of hard to read a book when a dog is literally just laying on your face. But that sounds like a personal problem. Yeah, it's very personal. But no, been kind of busy trying to do some renovations after the mm-hmm, move mm-hmm. and make the space livable. <laughs> yeah, no, that's understandable. I totally, totally get that. Uh, Got to make comfort part of the priority, especially in a new move. Yeah. Try, trying not to be picky and, like, <laughs> all the weird little comforts that you and I take for granted, move into another house with another person, it's like, you don't do it this way? You don't do this? Yeah. Are you alien? Yeah, that, well, that, that's very true. I mean, you, you certainly get in your into the swing of things, and then if that is uh, upset, the balance is uh, is out of balance. You need to rebalance yourself and balance and do other balancing. Okay, Jason. Maybe you should even balance your checkbook. Okay, Jason. Have you ever done that before? Balance your checkbook. I've done. Do you even it. know how? I've balanced my checkbook since I got my first job eight years ago. I've always had a checkbook, although I haven't been doing it this year. I started doing more online banking. I just look at the receipt. It's like. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Perhaps I'm not you writing should tell this down. all of the, uh, all the listeners what your bank account information is. And your well, and I, I was just going to say, really, they need the social security. It's true. Yeah, yeah I, God, I haven't balanced a checkbook in, uh, in forever. I really I just, don't see the point in it anymore. I mean, trust me, I know where my money's at. Yeah. But well, that's the thing. I check to make sure <laughs> that I didn't get double charged, but yeah. do I really need to write it down when I can just... Well, I, I don't know what our, our typical age range is for that might listen to this podcast, but I have to assume it's either like... Young kids or 40-year-old virgins, right? Yeah, and I feel like... <laughs> no, that's mean. Yeah, no. There, there's no in-between. So some of them might know, and others will check book. What's well, that? I was definitely on the cutoff point because no one my age does that. Not well, single, Even the people that are good with me don't took, do that. I actually had a class in, in <laughs> high school where... Oh, God, that was like he learned about – it was personal finance. So mm-hmm. you learned about, yeah. like, stocks and bonds and trading and how to balance a checkbook, how to write check, like, properly write a check. Right. I work for a bank, so I see a lot of people that uh, write really bad checks. Not bad like they can't cover them, but just, you know, you got to write certain things in a way to where, like, a fraudster couldn't, you know, get right. more money out of it or whatever. But anyway – this has been a terribly fun conversation so far, hasn't it? So you're saying the squiggly line after the amount is a is a go? Always do the squiggly line? Okay, listen. Man. I know that's what everyone's, you know, joining us today for. Uh, well, the squiggly yeah, line. Yeah, let's do a little, little ASMR, kind of kind of like talk radio. So today on WTVN, we're going to go ahead and balance your checkbook. 
Hello, caller. What are you have? What are you trying to do? What's mad? <laughs> God. Yeah, but it's true. A lot of a lot of uh, younger people would not would not know. But of course, accounts have also changed a lot too, where things will automatically pop up as mm-hmm. opposed to even five years ago or ten years ago, where you know you had to wait for them right. to post from an online profile standpoint. Yeah, on mine, it'll say pending, but, like, the second I swipe yep. the card, it, it's instantly it, it there. Pops really, the there. second I get my receipt now, I can just look it up, like, okay, I For can sure. throw that receipt away. Exactly. I don't need to worry about that. So when we're spending all of our Disney checks on all of our Star Wars merchandise, uh, you know, we've got to pop in our bank accounts to make sure we haven't overspent those checks. But, of course, Disney pays us so much to do these uh, shill podcasts that, I mean, we never run out of money. Nah. Nah, we're good. <laughs> Secretly, we both live in mansions. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't going to say that. I mean, I may or may not drive a Maserati, but... I still like my McLaren more. Yeah, hey man, I I can dig it. Okay, that's about enough of this foolishness. I think we're going to have a little bit longer conversation in the holonet. (laughs) Yes, and hopefully we don't offend anybody. Well, I'm cool We're not trying to. I'm cool with offending people. I don't care anymore. So, obviously... You know, our uh, anniversary of The Last Jedi being a year out. When exactly was that? When did they release that? Do you remember the date? I didn't watch that opening day, so I don't remember. I yeah, I know you didn't. I actually did. I went to the theaters and watched it. Um, was that beginning of December or end of December? And, uh, Pretty uh, sure it was December. I just can't remember if yeah, it was Christmas we, we time. Always, or... We always remember December. I don't. It wasn't Christmas time, I don't think. But anyway, let, let, let's just put it this way. We're coming. We're coming into the the time where, you know, this we is becoming a year old. So, uh, we were perusing, and we always peruse before these podcasts for uh, Star Wars news that we can kind of report on and just give general opinions because we all know you care. Uh, but anyway, story popped up. Well, you first saw a story with Ryan Johnson thanking the what is what did it say spirited or passionate uh, just, fans or whatever. It just said thanking the fans. I can't remember the whole thing. I didn't click on the article. It was just the clickbait part. Yeah, of it, gotcha. So. so I then pulled up an article from Esquire, which is a I don't know. Is that a big magazine or? Well, it's not really What's a magazine. What's a magazine? <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. I was I was telling a story about a really sweet fleece blanket I got from Sports Illustrated when I had that subscription when I was younger, and how you can't get a proper fleece blanket anymore. Isn't that weird to look at an old magazine <sighs> or book and see that back page the where invert, it's like the, the advert? Yeah, give yep. your address and we'll send you this. Like, get a sweet duffel so bag. Weird. Heck yeah, man! I always went for the fleece blankets or the pullovers. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, what what I was interested here was. Was a I, I want to talk a little bit about language, and I want to talk about the way we talk to each other nowadays. Because quite frankly, I'm actually kind of sick of it. Um, I think as a population, we've become way too comfortable with each other. Not saying we have to be prudes, but we do. We should be polite. And I think in the era we're living in, we're getting a lot of overgeneralization sensationalism, and voices that typically were trotted on for sometimes good reason, but those kind of minority voices that were getting trodden on are have a lot larger platform. I mean, let's, let's look at it. You've got Facebook. You've got Twitter. You've got YouTube. You've got, I don't know, what else is social media? MySpace for like the four perverts that are still on MySpace. <laughs> They are probably the best of friends, though, I'll tell you what. (laughs) Well, I'm going to small caveat. So I read a tweet this one person did, and they said, it would be sweet if, like, you know, you got on, I don't remember if it was Facebook or Twitter, but we'll say, I think it was Twitter. If you got on your Twitter homepage and it played music so people could hear what your favorite song is, and somebody commented back, it's like, that was literally MySpace. And that was. (laughs) Did you ever have a MySpace page? Uh no, I didn't. I think you were a little young, a yeah. little younger for that, yeah. and you probably. Yeah, I, didn't, I wasn't really allowed to be on the computer till I was around uh, eleven, twelve, and by then it was just dead. So that's true. I did. That was I, almost when Facebook started. Yeah. So well, I had. Um, I mean, I had a a personal MySpace page in high school, and then I had uh, a music page. I also had a music page where I put music on. 
um, at like my music on. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> but I just thought that was that was kind of funny because that was MySpace. You put on a song, yeah. and when they went to your page, you played the song. Had your little banner, you know. Yeah, decorate ban- oh, your God. wall and stuff. HTML text editing. It was fantastic. <laughs> anyway, I don't think. Yeah, well, never mind. So anyway, back to what I was talking about. So you have all these platforms to voice your opinion. That's great, right? Right. To an extent. <laughs> it does, however, give voice to a lot of negative opinions. So I want to first start by this article has a few good points, but it also misses the mark for me in a lot of other points. So let's talk first about what I think that they hit on. Have there been some racist, maybe even homophobic kind of attacks on the Star Wars universe? Yeah. I mean, I think that you're going to have that with any big franchise. True. But let, I mean, kind let, of inevitable. Right. But let's be honest here. Uh, Kelly, Kelly Marie Tran, I can't say that fast for some <laughs> reason. Um, who played Rose, Mm -hmm. Uh, she was attacked so hard on, I don't remember, Instagram or Twitter, whatever it was, whatever platform. Hey, there's another one, Instagram. Yeah, I was just going to say we remembered another. (laughs) So anyway, whatever platform it was, she actually deleted her entire profile because it got so bad. And there was some racism that was associated. She's Asian Mm -hmm. or Asian-American, I guess, or just American. I typically call everybody American if mm-hmm. you're an American citizen, but that's not really... That's probably not kosher anymore either. My, I, 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 don't, I don't even try and understand that in totality, but yes, there was definitely some, some stuff that was thrown at her that I didn't like. Um, and I, I'm friends with a lot of the people in the 501st and the Rebel Legion who do the cosplay, like the serious cosplay, and you know, I actually have a friend in there who did a rose, as her cosplay, and she looked really great. I mean, she did a great mm-hmm. job. That sort of attack doesn't sit well with me because we live in a time where, you know, race and, and, and color and all that should not be a deciding factor in anything, in, in my opinion. I don't think it should. No. We're, we're all the same kind of people. We, we might grow up in different, uh, you know, uh, family structures and different uh, socioeconomic you know, conditions, different areas, but at the same core, we're all people. Yeah, you put a person from any race in a different background, and they're going to adapt to that, in my opinion. I would it's hope Really, so. it doesn't have to do with color. It has to do with where you grew up. But in a lot of ways, or you know, we, we do live in a world where color and race and creed, uh, you know, do have a bearing on things. And mm-hmm. it is tough uh, for some of those in certain areas to to acclimate and to live happy and productive lives. So I'm not going to get super duper. I, I want to try and stay away from the super duper political stuff because I, I really, I really don't, I just don't want to go there. But I do acknowledge the issue. It is, there, there are issues, but there is also an issue with overgeneralization. So, not to... It's it's a major issue. It's something that if we don't deal with soon, it's going to take over every aspect of our lives. Well, yeah. And and here's the thing that I didn't like about this this article. Basically, this guy, and I want to pull up the first... Okay. Uh, Oh, so here... So, the, the, the head of the article, the year Star Wars fans finally ruined Star Wars... And then the subheading, in 2018, a loud movement of racist, misogynistic trolls derailed the beloved family sci-fi franchise. So let me start by saying, a lot of this article definitely overgeneralizes, and it doesn't say a group of Star Wars, it it just basically is these Star Wars fans are, so first and foremost, let's dispel one thing. There are a lot of fans that are... well, let's let's confirm and dispel at the same time. <laughs> there were a lot of fans that were very angry about this movie. I did not like parts of this movie. There were a lot of holes. You liked the movie less than I did. Correct. And I think you you were actually far more critical than I was. 
And it had nothing to do with the actresses and the actors in the movie. I thought, for the most part, most people, except for General Hux, played very good roles. They all acted really well. And really, well, it wasn't even Hux's fault. It was just the writing. You, and you, that was the issue for it, all of them. You, really. you still need to read the Aftermath books. I do. And, and, and I, can, I can explain Hux a lot more if you read those. And I, I actually made some notes on the, the Rebel Watch podcast when that came out. But anyway... Let's 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 stay let's stay let's stay on target. Stay on target. Most people did not have a problem with more female leads. There were some that did. Yep. And there are always going to be some crappy people in any group. Right. But Ray, love it. Love her as a character. Love Daisy Ridley. Look at the backlash on Finn. When Force Awakens was announced. Uh, yeah. I like Finn. I like John Boyega. I think he did a really good job. I think they took a huge step back in his character in The Last Jedi. They did. And that's what I didn't like about that. Was he, that they, he essentially became C-3PO in a um, way. Yeah. <laughs> they sidelined him. Rose. I didn't care for Rose's character because I felt like they were trying to make it bigger than what it should have been. I don't believe that character should have had as big a role as it was given. Now, that doesn't mean I didn't like the actress. How was the acting? The yes, acting was fine. Yeah. I, I, I don't have a problem with the acting. I don't like the direction. Yes. So, for me, with Rose, it has nothing to do with who she is. It's just I feel like she was given too big of a part. Yeah. I have a problem with who she is as a character because she wasn't written very well. It has nothing to do with yeah, well, being another female that. lead or anything like that. She was a bit all over the place. She was bland. Yeah, It was a bland character. Yeah. Um, and we also talked a little bit before this about Ad- the Admiral Holdo. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I didn't really get her character here, uh, to be honest. She just shows up, you know, tall with purple hair. Yeah. It well, would have been much more interesting to just watch Leia struggle with this instead of her taking... Of course, uh, at the time, she didn't have a lot of choices, but... Yeah, I just, you know, I just didn't really... The character didn't get... There was no emotional uh, contact between me and that character yeah. either. Not to say it was a bad thing, I just didn't really care for it. But I live with it. I'll live with it. But the problem the vast majority of fans have with this movie is the direction of the movie. It has nothing to do really with the characters. Although, again, let me acknowledge, yes, there were people out there that hated and and used real hate towards characters. But by and large, people really just hated the movie because the movie didn't go in the way in which people thought it should. That doesn't make it a wrong but I think as Star Wars fans, we expect certain things. Yes, but the problem comes along with people assuming that because there is a vocal minority that are just bigots and, in general, terrible people, hateful, spiteful people, they see their comments and then they see other people who have a legitimate reason for not liking this movie and they lump them all together, which, ironically, is the same as all those racist people, you know, talking crap about the, uh, you know, the choice to have a black stormtrooper, the choice to have an Asian lead. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, there's no difference. It's, it's just another form of racism in a way, not technically towards a race, but to a group of people. To generalize them that way, it's no better. <laughs> right. There was also... Uh this, this writer said that they had received, you know, like death threats and, and um, other like bigoted remarks uh, thrown at them because of their coverage of Star Wars and Star Wars news. And of course, that's not right. But they then link to a tweet here, which I, again, I feel like in a way I'm just, I'm kind of diving a little too deep here, but I did think it was interesting. So the tweet was basically so this guy was saying 
So you're saying that Star Wars fans suck at the end of your last article. Um, you know, and he said, well, that's funny. Some Star Wars fans were being racist towards Kelly Marie Tran. So he acknowledged that, yes, there was racism here. But, you know, you saying that this whole group is of a negative stereotype, what is that? You know, how does that help anything? And then he goes on to say, you know, that'd be like me saying all Esquire writers suck when I'm sure most of them are actually pretty good. But not taking the time to actually do that research and get into Mm -hmm. the mix. It's very easy to sit behind a keyboard. So anyway, and then another commenter comes in here, well, not surprised to see a white person saying this. So again, like, this guy's comment, it wasn't a death threat. Let me put it to you that way. So it, it was just strange to say that I've gotten death threats and all this pervasive tweeting when they link to one, and it's like, well, this guy was, basically all he was saying was that, you know, it's weird that you're calling all these people, you know, all these fans saying that they suck, and acknowledging that, yes, there is some racism here, but you lumping everybody into one group, how is that any better? And then, of course, you have the token coming in here who probably thought he was super clever. Well, not surprised this was a white guy saying this. Well, you know, white people can say stuff. Black people can say stuff. Asian people. We can all say stuff. It depends on the content of what you're putting out there, right? You can't just say garbage. And I see so much garbage being spouted from politicians, from people, from (laughs) everyone, coworkers, Mm -hmm. family. It, It happens. But, you, you know, you have to rise above at some point and say, I'm not going to lump everybody together and view them all as, as bad because of one or two people who are loud. You tell those loud people to shut up. And you ignore them. But that's not normally how people work. <laughs> that is kind of the problem with the Internet, though. It's hard to ignore True. all these loud people who... Well, they get ignored in real life, let's be honest. No one gives them the time of day, and in the age of technology, it's even worse because no one really interacts with each other outside of technology. Right. But these people have, I mean, a massive audience. They have all the time in the world to spout their hate, and it's just really troubling because... It's just becoming another form of division. Right. Not only for our country, but for the world, really. True. I want to move to another part of the article. So then he starts talking about the critical response to the movie and the fan response to the movie. So let me be very, very frank about this. Critics are not always correct. Critics do not always get everything right. And critics, unfortunately, can be paid for. And to blindly follow the opinion of a critic without actually taking the time to research it yourself is pretty foolish. Right. So basically, he says says here, hate began almost immediately after The Last Jedi hit theaters to positive reviews from critics. Days after the movie was released, Rotten Tomatoes was swarmed with negative reviews marking uh, the biggest disparity biggest disparity between fans and critics. Let me go ahead and look up Rotten Tomatoes on... uh, Let's see what the ratings are right now. Uh, Because I haven't looked at this in a while. What do you think it's going to be? 100% I don't think it's going to be any less than 99. All right, so from the critic response, 91%. Audience score, 45%. So, yeah, that is a pretty different... That's a big margin, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not really... I I was trying to kind of skim through a lot of these, or some of these, but... I don't know, I mean... Do you think these critics watched Star Wars growing up? uh, I think some, yes, absolutely. Some, but... Truthfully, no. I mean, I I, no. I think I I think I don't think it would be fair to really bring that in the analogy. I think I I I think they have. I'm just saying. I think most of the people that had issue with the movie were those that grew up 
with this, I mean, wonderful series and didn't like the direction it went. Yeah. yeah I don't I've think the majority just hated the undertones for animal abuse and all that stuff. I don't think it had anything to do with that. I think they just didn't like the direction. They didn't well, like the writing. They didn't like the pacing. They didn't like the direction. Yeah, I'm, I'm skimming comments here. So, you know, some of it's uh, character assassination, uh, making my characters look selfish or bitter or just goofy. Uh, let's see here. Well, some of them were. I'm sorry. <laughs> Plot some holes. Of them were silly. Bad writing, nostalgia's over. Co- uh, bad writing masqueraded with uh, or coated with special effects. Uh, you know, th- well, this is one thing. Yeah, basically, uh, you know, not enough Ray. Uh huh. And there wasn't enough Ray no. either. There wasn't enough Jedi at all in the last Jedi. Yeah, so I mean a lot and and of course I'm, you know, you guys can dispute this till the rain, you know, cows come home or whatever, or the rain comes down cuz I I mean like I understand that I'm not going to look through all of these. But yeah, I mean there are a lot of them that uh that I'm reading here that it's just mainly they just didn't like the script. You know, m- mistakes, my plot issue holes. As well. Things like that. So just in the first page, I didn't really see any racist undertones there but that's again we know that it's happened we're not disputing that but we do have to we do have to this doesn't just start start or stop with Star Wars we have to kind of stop doing this in general stop over generalizing let people be people block out the negative and just enjoy what you enjoy but understand that not everybody is going to enjoy the same things that you enjoy. I found some enjoyment in Last Jedi, but I can't give it 100%. Uh, And to be honest, the more and more and more I watch it, the more little chips kind of occur. But again, I'm not, again, it wasn't like a horrible movie for me, but it wasn't near as good as... I would put it on par with episode two. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but it doesn't episode even two touch the original very trilogy good. at all. It doesn't even come close to touching it. No. And I was super excited because I love The Force Awakens. I did too. Rogue One Off obviously was a big pump up there. Solo. And, well, and I like Solo amazing. after the fact. It was amazing. But a lot of people didn't watch Solo because yeah. of the dissatisfaction. And, and see, that's the other thing. How do you get a big company like Disney to change? You stop buying stop their buying. crap. Yep. That's with any company, truthfully. Yep. That's the only thing they listen to. They don't listen to angry tweets. They don't listen to... All uh, about the, the pocketbook. When certain things are thrown in the mix, such as you know, racism or misogyny, sure, but they don't have that. To worry about, right? But but again, you know, how do you deal with it? You stop buying. Yeah. And it's a shame because that means we won't get anything else like Solo because it wasn't received well, and that's truly what I wanted. Yeah, and I mean, we'll After see. Seeing that, I want more of that. Well, well, we'll see. We'll we'll see what happens after Episode Nine. Um, I think I think JJ had a had a real vision. Force Awakens, and I'm hoping mm-hmm. he just carries that over. So I don't envy him for having to <laughs> fix this, but I still have hope. Well, well, Episode Nine almost has to become a two-parter. It really does, and no one wants it. But I'm sorry, it has yeah. to. So just to wrap this up, because I do want to get into the chapter here, I don't want to go on too long about this. But uh, the writer has points, but I feel like. Maybe he needs to take a swig of coffee, maybe a shot of whiskey, maybe a nice cigar. That'd be good. And sit back and think, I love this franchise. And although people might not always agree with it, I don't have to get angry about that. It doesn't have to affect your day. And everybody knows 
that those racists and bigots are a holes. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows. Yep. But having to obnoxiously point it out in a big article, it does nothing for you. And in don't the give eyes, them attention. Don't yeah. give them the attention because that's truthfully what they want. Lot, yeah. But anyway, you know, I respect the guy. I, I think, uh, you know, certain things do need to be said, but at the same token, we need to stop overgeneralizing. Yeah. Because that's never going to, uh, that's never going to bring anybody to your side or to agree with your opinion. Yeah. And speaking of opinions, just to end this, um, don't forget that in fighting for your opinion and the right to voice it, you don't crush someone else's. And throw out that easy to throw out term. They're a racist. They're a bigot. They're this. They're that. They just didn't like the movie. Unless they're actual racists. Yeah. In that case, ignore them and screw them. Kick them screw in the balls. Them. Right in the balls. But for the, the rest of them, they just didn't like the movie, and that's okay. True <laughs> enough. So let's go ahead and move on to happier times here. But if you don't like this book, then screw you. I'm yeah. going home. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, let's see. Two. Yep. Turning it back. Did you read the chapter? I did. I even went ahead to 23. Not a huge chapter, though. How many pages was this? Maybe 10? 15? 20? 45? No, that's the next one. Okay. Wasn't, it, wasn't, a, it wasn't a huge Looking chapter. like 12, 13 maybe? Yeah. But we uh, dangerously thin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The book is getting dangerously thin, isn't it? It is. Now, I will admit I haven't read this for oh, roughly two weeks now, so I'm going to be... Or whenever we uh, we planned to do two on the last podcast oh, I was true, a part yeah. of, so that was when I read it, so... That's true. I will be a little rusty. Oh, not a problem. <laughs> Excuse me. So when we last left everyone, our friends and heroes here, they were... Uh, Kind of checking out that coral skipper. Mm-hmm. And old Luke and Lando were hatching a plan mm-hmm. to go to the Haleska system and, you know, just, you know, drill into some using Vong home planet and, you know, base of operations. Maybe you know, you, uh, yeah, screw yeah. some stuff up. Maybe, uh, you know, a little interstellar battle. Maybe, uh, you know, it's good times. You know, you know the strategy I would use? You ever seen an underground hornet's nest uh no but there i have seen a large fire ant's nest yeah where <laughs> yeah I'm anyway you know, you know how you deal with them you just drill a little hole in the ground and then you park a mower over it so if they just get a space mower deck drill a little hole in that ice planet they'll all just fly right into it i think that that's wrong are you using vong like wasps and and hornets. That's not how it works. I think the. Are you sure? No, you do. You do what's on those crazy YouTube channels with like molten lead. You ever seen that? Yeah. First of all, I don't think that that's real. Probably not. Like I feel like they already decommissioned that hole, and then because like honestly, as soon as they started pouring that in there, they would get swarmed. Yeah. Right. I don't. Fi- I mean, I would assume they could fly around it, and get to them. Looks yeah. pretty crazy. Have you ever seen those? Yeah. That looks insane. Yeah. Like. Yeah, anyway, that's... And who point. has that equipment in their back? It's like, oh, the there's, a, there's a hornet's nest in my backyard. I need some molten metal. Come on. Who doesn't have a crucible? Just a little Me. little mini crucible? Melting some ingots? Yeah. Okay. I've got, get, like... Get I, I've only got, like, five ingots in the backyard. It wouldn't be enough. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Oh, let's get in here. It won't work. Mara it will won't. work. Just use the space mower deck. Nope. Mara says it won't work. That's the first thing that says here. Mara's sick. Yeah, she's, Mara's. she's hallucinating. Mara, come on. You're just sick. This will totally work. Just where'd, you bring... e- where'd you even get that? <laughs> space rule king. Yeah, I'm just. I'm going to crack a beer here, and we're just going to go to it, Mara. Didn't you know I've done this all before? Good Destroyed crack. Death Star one time. We cracked we got, this beer. Here, hold my beer that Luke, I just cracked. Luke got really hillbilly. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Okay. Hold my lightsaber. So that basically, Luke is going to Mara with his, with his big idea here. Um, the plan is to take the Jade Saber and this uh, cylindrical drilling apparatus 
and launch it from like a kind of a, a what a torpedo bay or something. Mm-hmm. Launch it at the planet and then kind of drill through, go in and stuff. Only Luke. Well, Only he's, Luke. he's Luke Skywalker. There could be a million enemies in there. Luke's just like, I'm just going to bore through the ice. I'll go through. It'll be fine, Mara. It's cool. You'll have no weapons. <laughs> None from the ship, at least. No shields other than the forward heat and impact protection and not enough speed to outrun a headhunter. Never mind one of those coral skippers. So Luke just, you know, grins like an idiot at her. And then she says, I should be the one to take the ice borer in. And then his smile evaporated. Oh, it's it's my plan. No way. It's my plan. You know, basically he's identifying Mara. And Mara's basically saying, you know, when we're we're dealing with value of life here, Mm. mine at this point has less value because I'm terminally sick and, you know, ill and, and it would be less of a sacrifice if things went wrong. But then Luke, you know, he tries to do some reasoning here. Well, if you suffer a relapse, you'll jeopardize the whole mission, which honestly was kind of a dick thing to say, wasn't it? Yeah. Would you say that to your to sick your, wife? To your dying wife? No, I don't think I would say that. <laughs> of course, then she comes back because obviously Mars is much smarter. And if I have a relapse flying your carry ship, yeah, shut up, Luke. Come you on. won't, but I will if I do the space torpedo. Yeah. You will. <laughs> you will. You well, won't. what if I do this? You won't. Well, what if I do Well, you will. That just seemed like you a very... Will have, I'm sorry, God. people, I hit that. You will have a relapse. Oh, you won't God. have a relapse. He's doing... You're Je- not Obi-Wan. He's, he's trying to do... He's motioning Jedi mind tricks. You can't see it. We're not doing video. That's okay. They can, they can tell. They You're can tell. using the force on them. They heard... The, the mic. You will watch. You will listen to more of this podcast. Download it. Tell all of your friends. Go to Facebook dot com and leave us comments. You will talk or, to me. I am lonely, and you will become a patron. <laughs> Email tcplanpodcast at gmail dot com with any of your questions, and then you will go to Podbean. Podbean Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> you will go to Podbean and download it, even though you did that already. Download it again, and then go to Patreon and check out Dinner with the Patron series if you feel like giving. But if you don't, that's cool too. That was the latest plug. It's good <laughs> in the entire scene. Hey, it's good. Anyway, let's let's move on here. So then we change point of view to Jaina, Jason, and little Annie. They're almost done with it. Uncle Luke's really going to go up in that thing, Anakin asked. And he's really going to wear that living suit and mask they found on the, with the pilot? Jason, I, and go for it. I, I just love how they interject the plan that way. It's like, you mean the thing we were just talking about yeah. all alone? Yes. It, were, were you reminding yeah. someone of that? Are you catching him up to speed? What's going on? Exactly. Oh, he's trying the suit right now, Jane explained. Why don't you go check it out? So, <laughs> Jane, no, is basically, <laughs> Jane is basically trying to get Anakin out of the room here. So, so quickly, they're just like, eh, little Annie, get out of here. After he freaking had a massive force connection with the two mm-hmm. of them that broke all of their preconceived notions of the force. But eh, he's just a kid. Annie, go ahead and get out of here. You're, you're just too much of a little Annie right now. Let the little grown-ups play. Oh, and here comes Jason. Uncle Luke's the wrong one to go. I'm more concerned about Aunt Mara, Jana replied. She slept most of the day and still ha- still and was still exhausted when she got up to eat her dinner. Did you see the dark circles under her eyes? Yeah, tell that to her face. She'll smack you. Her disease is getting the best of her right now, mostly because she's too preoccupied with all of this. They stared at each other long and hard, knowing that they were of like mind, though neither was brave enough to put the thoughts to words. At that moment. My master's better. <laughs> no, my master's better. That's not what they're saying. We can't <laughs> let Mara go. We can't stop her if Uncle Luke goes. He's such a such a little sneaky snake. You think they'll wait for the rejuvenator and her escorts to come in before they leave? I think they'll go first. I heard Uncle Luke say as much to Dad. He doesn't want to wait for anything. 
but his plan is to get the ice bore off planet just in time to meet up with the incoming fleet. So what is what is what is Jason and Jana planning here? Come on, Darth. Aku. Aku. Octu. Octu. Okay, so let's 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 be pretty blunt here um, and, and skip some of the niceties. Jason and Jana, in their infinite what sixteen year old wisdom here, think that Uncle Luke, the most powerful Jedi Master in the galaxy, uh, should not be going on this mission, and yeah. that the Wonder Twins form of a bucket. an ice dragon, form of a bucket of water should go and in their stead and do the mission. What do you think about that? I think it's just glorious. You know, he only fought a god. Glorious! He just, he just fought a god. Who is he, anyway? All he did was teach him how to even hold a lightsaber. Did they even know how to turn a lightsaber on before Luke? Hey, man. Yeah, it's okay, though. Just saying. He's so getting th- old. He just, he's, got, he's got to retire to Endor or something. Oh, God. Not it. So basically, they're they're gonna go, essentially steal the ship in the ice bore. Where's R two? We should leave a message. How sweet of them! Yeah, like writing them a little little hollow message. Hi, hey Luke, Mara. We're just gonna go, you know, do what you were gonna do. We stole your ship. <laughs> we'll fill we'll fill the gas tank up on oh, the way God. back. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Space fuel, whatever it's called, still can't remember. Coaxium. Coa- we'll fill up on coaxium on the way back, we promise. That wasn't invented I at know. this point. Thank God. Jeez, I, I do hate space fuel. It's so stupid. Oh, anyway, so then we go to the uh, point of view back of Luke. We have Luke, Han, Leia, and Lando sitting at a small round table arguing with each other, uh, which is nothing new. When on the view screen, the imposing image of Commander Warshak Rojo. Warshak. Glorious. Yeah, it's kind of a cool name. Warshak. Warshak, baby. Wait a minute. There was a. There was a it was it Marvel or DC Rorschach? Wasn't that like a the ink blot detective looking guy? Do you remember that? Kind of like an anti hero. I never really. Watched it. But. He looked like he, well, I don't want to say that on a family friendly kind of podcast, but he looked like he had a big old right in the face. Anyway, Commander Warshak Rojo of the Star's Destroyer, Rejuvenator, with his shaved head, furrowed brow, and a single glimmering diamond earring. Oh, yeah, that's Mis- just badass. Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean. <laughs> 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 White t-shirt, I've arms got, crossed I've got some lemon pine saw for you boys Anyway And the commander, we should go straight to Haleska The ranger gunships will handle any of the smaller What did you call them? Coral skippers while Rejuvenator takes out whatever base those barbarians have set up It'll be a clean sweep, I assure you And then we will get on with more important issues facing the New Republic you may join us in the system if you desire. More important issues. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah, that's an interesting sort of thing, isn't it? So mm-hmm. he's coming in here, taking control, military commander, Corellian, mm-hmm. Warshak. <laughs> anyway, uh, comes in here, guns blazing, we're going, you can come if you want, but I don't really care, we're going to blow that sucker out of the sky. Pretty confident, huh? Do you see something going terribly wrong? Oh, I'm hoping on it. <laughs> well, Commander Roar, Roar, I mean, I see I'm about to call him Rorschach. Rorschach. Warshack. He even has like a proper command. War. War. I'm Warshack. I'm built for war. Anyway, we Do you really think his name it. was just Shack, but then he became a military officer? He's like. I would have hoped his name was just War. War Rojo. Warshack. Maybe that was Where'd just... Shaq come from then? Well, <laughs> well, if you think about it, so Han Solo was just Han, but he was Solo. So maybe... Uh, Still trying to figure it out. Maybe his name was Rojo, and he was found in a shack, and he killed people, so they called him War Shack. A shack that was literally in the middle of a war zone. Even better. Just a little baby, and one of the soldiers like, oh, look at this. I'll just slap him to my back <laughs> while I'm get, fighting this war. Get into that War Shack. Oh, my God, what is this going on? We're really going off yeah, the, off the rails. We, it's we, okay. 
Listen, man, we need to wrap this thing up soon. We got the Cleveland Browns, Denver Broncos. I got my uh, woke up feeling dangerous Baker Mayfield T-shirt. We need to watch football. Star Wars. Related. Stuff happens, stuff happens, stuff happens. Okay, last page. <laughs> no, no, we're good. We got plenty of time. So anyway, uh, obviously the commander here is he's wanting to get on with it, blow this thing out of the water, get back to more pressing issues for the New Republic. Uh, let's see here. We have three battle crew. Uh, this is what this is six days. We have three battle cruisers and an interdictor. What the heck? An interdictor ship. <laughs> I think we need to Google that one. What's an interdictor ship? I feel like we should know that. An interdictor ship. Okay. Anyway, it's should, another star. Maybe maybe I should say that word a few more hundred times so I jog the memory. What do you think? Another I think star I might destroyer. Still be a child on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> and there are accompanying task forces. And by then, we need. So basically, Leia's is saying, you know, we should wait. We should wait this time. We can get more more people here. We need not wait. The command said the commander, the hard headed Corillian. I have enough firepower to level the entire enemy base. The and that planet, enemy base it's he's on ever seen. if needed. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Leia gave a helpless sigh. She knows Corellians pretty well. It's kind of like the original Alien movie. Like, oh, we got all these. We got all these weapons. We're fine. We can hunt this thing down. Oh, oh, never mind. They always have so many weapons. Never seems to work. Even a flamethrower doesn't work. But basically, the commander just says we're going. And if we have to go alone, then so be it. Well, Luke started to turn to say something to the stubborn man, but the uh, something in the window caught his eye. What caught his eye? I'm Darth still Austin. trying to, you know, different size books here. I'm still trying to catch up. I'm going to find, for the next book, a giant hard copy. Just no, so you're not. To mess you up. Then I will, too. I'll have both, and then you can't mess me up. I'll just Fine. carry both with me at all times. What does he find while I get caught up here? Because I the just carry ship, The carry <laughs> ship, Mary Minor, and its ice bore companion. Who came up with Mary Minor, by the way? Is there, do you have a problem with the Mary Minor? It, it just sounds like a Christmas-themed one, and I'm saying hey. it's amazing because it's good timing because it's Christmas time. Are we allowed to say Christmas? That okay? It's the most wonderful time of the year. Happy holidays, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, now that we've alienated uh, probably about three quarters of our podcast listening base, both the Merry us, Miner. Both of us did. It's just a happy mining ship. And, uh, you know, basically both Mary, Mara, I mean Mara. <laughs> well, Mara and Luke pretty much know here. What is that? And then here comes C-3PO. Good evening, sir. Not now, but R2, sir. Not now. A message from Master Jason. <laughs> and here. Uh, what did he do this time? Well, Master. <laughs> Uncle Luke, forgive us for a presumption, but it seemed obvious to me and to Jaina that you've needed... That, that you've needed... Wi- what? Your, your needed. Oh, my With goodness. the fleet in the main attack force, we know what you intended. I failed you. I failed you. Within all. the fourth planet to explore and determine the strength and purpose of our enemies. I, we, we can do that, Uncle Luke. Yeah, you see he said Uncle I. Uncle Luke. You see he said I. Uh-huh. Yeah, he yeah. doesn't. He, he, it's all him, man. Keep Aunt Mar at rest. She needs it. Jen and I will be fine, and we will carry out the Murphy, the Murphy, <laughs> the, the mission perfectly. Okay. Perfectly. So I manage a team at a bank. Uh, I have had several people that, you know, when they talk about themselves, they talk about themselves doing thing perfect, things perfectly. I cannot stand that. Mm-hmm. Like the whole, I, I'm doing the, I can not stand that. Did you get the clapping in there? <laughs> I think we all did. I hate that because it is so arrogant. It's ridiculous. The fact that Jason, at, at, at as young as he is, where he's saying here, well, we're going to do it perfectly. Oh, come on, man. That's an automatic set you up for failure move there. You we know, all know something bad's happening. You know, the plan that you haven't even really included <laughs> me on, I don't know every yeah. part, but we're going to do it perfectly. It's okay. We got this. So then uh, Han, 
I really can't read. Han then Dale says, Hanny. <laughs> I'm going to kick his bleep. Jason's right, Luke interrupted. Which, okay, this next few sequences here, I, I have to say, I have a bit of an issue with. I on don't. Luke's side or Han's side? On Luke's side. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I feel like it's a bit odd. Maybe I'm wrong, but when Luke starts to say Jason's right, I wish they had come to me first. I wish they had better coordinated their intentions. I wish they had come to me first before they stole my ship. <laughs> but he's basically like, yeah, it's cool. They'll, yeah, they should do it. And then, of course, you know, Han's just pissed. He's like, are you kidding me, man? You're raising Jedi Knights. And Leia, but you think that sending Jason down into the planet is the right choice? And Luke says, without hesitation here, as good a choice as any. So what Luke is saying is that sending, and I'm sorry, but an unproven Jedi in his stead? Is it good a choice? And why didn't he choose that to begin with? Obviously, he didn't trust them. Do you, Otherwise, do you, do he wouldn't you think be doing it. Do you think it's like a false confidence, maybe trying to like calm down like Han and Leia? Or do you think but he really believes gonna, it? You're not going to calm Han. And if there's any confidence, it would be put in Jaina, not Jason. But do you think he means it? I, it wouldn't make sense to me if he did. I don't know. He continues on here. He doesn't he, baby people it's been made pretty clear throughout yeah the book, but but i know but the, but to think that a this lot's on the line that's and that's what may, well and the other thing maybe they don't really understand how much is on the line here still because they don't really know the use and vong's plans here they just know that it's something that needs to be dealt with yeah they don't really know all the technology either but anyway luke continues to say you're raising jedi knights warriors explorers they can't turn away from the duty that is before them just for our peace of mind. Okay, but at the same time, if if you're allowed to use that excuse for everything, then that's the reason we have 100 Jedi Knights just going around doing whatever they want, and there's no yeah. structure. Well, that's true. Now, Han does say here they're just kids, and then Luke uh, reminds him, and so were we when the Empire unveiled the Death Star, which is true, but of course Han, Han was a little older. Speak for yourself. I just went halfway across the galaxy pulling one of them back, and now I've got to go. Uh, now I've got the other two running off in another direction. Yeah, and then Luke you know, basically says, get used to it. and Enjoy it while you can. You won't be able to keep up with them much longer. That what a That was kind dick. of a dick move. Oh, my God. He's on freaking solo, Luke. <laughs> Won't be able to keep with a, up with him much longer. You don't even have a kid. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Han was good until, uh, you know, Kylo was, what, about 28, 30? I would have I punched him straight in the face. <laughs> yeah. I would have punched his that Jedi. Was, I, oh, I love that was Lu probably the most dickish Luke has ever Listen, been. Listen, I love Luke Skywalker. Don't get me wrong. But if I were Han So, and then I would have punched him in the yep. face. Or in the neck. Man, maybe not the neck. The face. Throat punches are pretty satisfying. Yeah, but it could also really, really damage things. Maybe you could stop, stop him talking. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. maybe break his arm. Yeah. Okay, so breaking <laughs> his arm is better than throat punch. Well, you know, his he kind of needs his arm to fight right well, now. Well, he he has the other one. Is he ambidextrous? What if he breaks no, just, his strong arm? Just break arm? his non-sword arm. His non-dominant arm. Do you is think if you're angry lefty? enough to decide to break your best friend's arm, you're going to consider that? <laughs> you're, 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 you're really looking. I, would, I just mentioned breaking a little bit of an arm, and you're like, oh, no. And I'm just saying Can't throat break punches are anymore. awesome, and you're like, oh, no. <laughs> Difference between light and dark side. Apparently. <laughs> so much clouded judgment. Well, throat punch could just kill you. Broken arm, you can get over that. A little back to you. That's all. It's back to me. Well, apparently Han Solo is just an old man, so it really shouldn't kill him. That's, <laughs> That's so, so not good. Anyway, um, yeah, they kind of point out again, you know, he just lost Chewie. He doesn't want to lose anyone else, which is true. And then came the voice of Commander Rojo. I think it's Rojo. What did Rojo. I say? What did Rojo. I say? 
what did I say? Said Rojo. 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 It's probably Rojo, isn't it? Warshak Rojo. War Shack Rojo or Ro- Ro- I can't say it. Rorschach War Rojo. You said Rorschach. It's Warshack. I just said it because War- I know that's what you almost said. Warshack. <laughs> Rojo or Warshack Rojo. What do you think? It looks more like Rojo. I should have known that. I think it's Rojo. We'll go with Rojo. Behind them, it has begun. It's settled then. It has begun. Oh. What do you think here? I don't know. There's not much really in this immediate vicinity here. Why'd you have to make them Jedi? I'm sorry. Oh, I just love you, that hey, part. Hey, yeah, thanks. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, that was a good. That was a good line. Why'd you have to make them Jedi? <laughs> uh, well, the 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 last part of this particular POV is is essentially just you know Han uh, gearing up the ship. He's uh, you know he. Endless Lando, who's a little bit hesitant, but he's like, "Go Glad get Anakin." To have you. <laughs> yeah, what was that? Glad to have you. Go get Anakin. He's handling the gun pod. You, Leia, Anakin, and Kip. Lando reason four is plenty for the Falcon. Me, Anakin, Leia, and you. Kip's going to lead a starfighter squadron off Rejuvenator. Do you notice? I, I wish they would say the Rejuvenator squad. Yeah, I know. Led a starfighter squadron off Rejuvenator. Off it's the just, rejuvenator. It's just yeah? awkward. Yeah. Uh, so. My fighting days have only just begun. Have Haunted only interrupts. just begun. They've only just begun. Can Lando sing that? Sure. <laughs> Please. Just, I, I can't. I don't have a Lando impression. I don't either. Maybe one day we'll cultivate that. So anyway, they blast off the Haleska system, and we are back to Jason and Jan. Which I'm sorry, this this next little bit is so damn funny. <laughs> oh, How's man. it funny? Oh, it's just how like Jason. funny, funny like a clown. Am I funny to you? Yes. Okay. Yes, Jason, you're very fun to me, funny to me while you're wearing your little skirt in your coral skip. Again. <laughs> so anyway, basically, Luke had already fed the coordinates into the Mary Minor. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Get out of here. So anyway, uh, they're basically just on flight, pre-programmed in. Cruise control. Yeah, cruise control, if they have that. Intergalactic cruise control. And once they get to the uh, to the planet, we'll call it Ice Ball, because I like that. I want to I jump ahead a little bit here, because really there's, there's... You don't want to talk about the skirt? Just say and the it. Just, just talk no, about the Ooglyph. No, you know good. you want to. You love it. Everyone knows what we're talking he about. He puts here. on the Ooglyph. He shoves the star thing down his throat. <laughs> <laughs> Do you notice that they never mention that they plug their noses? And they say the first time that little guy is um, debuted, it's like, and he would basically suffocate you if you don't plug your nose because he's going to try yeah, and stick his tendrils into that too. <laughs> <laughs> that's r- did they know that did like Jason and Luke no know that? nobody knows that but it doesn't do it <laughs> didn't want to go into their noses yeah. interesting human noses man they're just weird so uh, basically you know they fire off the ice bore goes in Jason gets in the planet so we're gonna we're gonna maneuver a little bit here so then uh, Jaina picks up Jason's descent and she notices that he fires one of his, like, stabilizing rockets, which he wasn't really supposed to do. Just element of surprise. So she is essentially put into evasive maneuvers here. She knows some maneuvers. Listing lazily to the left isn't in her repertoire, though. No. So she does see some, some coral skippers coming at her. And then... Uh, she does a little little rotation around the sun. However, doesn't really work. No. They saw her now, she knew, and she was out of tricks. Now, part of the plan here, <laughs> part of the plan was to launch the ice borer in the Mary Minor just before the fleet would come in. Mm-hmm. Now, Jason and Jenna didn't really, you know, necessarily think about that memo. 
However, it luck is on their side, so to speak. Now, uh, yeah, we go back to uh, to Jason here for a little bit. He is ejected into the water. He's got his lightsaber. But he is wearing the Ugolith Muscular. So, let's see here. Swimming around. He's worrying. Being watery and bubbly. Takes a deep underwater breath. Talks about he's being a Jedi. And then he finds an opening. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically the way to sum up about a page and a half there. Watery breath, watery breath, draw my lightsaber, Jedi, open it. <laughs> yeah, well, there, and, and again, and then we switch POVs again. Jane is still biting her lip because... Yeah. A month later, just like in The Last Jedi, holding that lightsaber out for... <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my God, I've been biting my lip a month. It's so dry, cracked, yeah. and bloody. But basically, you know, right as she's saying they've got me, then the rejuvenator comes out of hyperspace, the cruisers and the gunships, and she's uh, basically, you know, gives a little, yee Hey there, Mary Minor. Something like that. <laughs> hey there, Mary Minor. Came in familiar voice. Need a, little, need a little help? Well, that's Kip Durin. You got some sugar here. What are your neighbors? <laughs> got a little sugar. Hey, hey there, Jane. Shake it like a Polaroid picture. We're making Kip sound much, much less epic. Yeah. Hey there, Mary Minor. Need a little help? We we can take care of these guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you do, you don't have the whistle. Uh, yeah, you I yeah. I have a little. I can't do it. I, I can, but yeah, not not tonight apparently. And and basically, you know, they're 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 picking up the Mary Minor, and uh, Rojo is is ready to just blast this planet out of out of orbit. That being in mind, stop, Jason. On planet. Would it be a huge? No, we we won't go there. Never mind. <coughs> Blow it Just... up. Blow it up now. <laughs> okay. So he does encounter some using Vong here. Oh, uh, let's see. The apparent leader, the one who had motioned to him. He had only one eye. Can you believe that? Skin around both of his sockets. Wait, the skin around both of his sockets. Yeah. The only part of his true skin that was visible because of the Ugolith cloaker and the star-shaped breather was heavily tattooed. Jason noted that each succeeding warrior carried fewer scars or tattoos on their exposed region. Now, Jason shows up, and you notice how rank, so he would be at the bottom. Mm-hmm. He's the red shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, by God. And, and this is the thing, because the Yuzin Vong don't like jumping. They actually start to try and talk to him. You're a thug. Yeah, you found it. Good. Yeah. So they're, they're like, are you one of us? Mm-hmm. Isn't that a little weird? Yeah. Kind of makes you wonder what a Yuzin Vong looks like when they're first born, before they start getting all scarred out. It's like, do they look just like us? Or somewhat Good like us? Good point. Point. We need to Google that. Young using Vong, see what comes up. Well, yeah, I mean, we've got a lot to go into. There's going to be some but, obvious and, differences. And trust me, I don't but, remember yeah. everything. Yeah. But anyway, he does, however, recognize, uh, let's see here. Miko. Well, we've got Miko, young Jedi, and he sees a woman. A beautiful, beautiful woman. You're an angel. Oh, God. <laughs> Wrong kid. What was the other thing he said? Your, 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 what is he, something about his dreams? It's, um, crap. What does he say when, uh, when he meets Amandala uh, and you later? Um, you're exactly as I dreamed about you, or something like that. You're as beautiful as I remember in my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> God, the writing was so bad. Uh, he was so awkward. He was you fantastic. feel like he was just like watching a lot of soap operas when he was writing that movie. I have no idea. But he recognized the woman, too. Oh, as the source of the telepathic call. We skip That's that. That's interesting. We skip that because we're horrible hosts. But anyway, yeah. Jason, Jason got a, a telepathic call. Mm-hmm. So when he comes in here and he sees Miko, a Jedi that he 
knows. Ah, uh, bro, bro, bro. But I got you called. Whoa. It wasn't. It was it the woman, you. old Danny Quay. Is she a Jedi in the future? At least force sensitive. Force sensitive. Force sensitive. And then, you know, they're using Vong. Oh, good, good, good. Youth hug. <laughs> Youth hug. Yeah, it does. That's kinda... funny. He's literally saying youth. Because there he sees no scars or anything. Maybe that's kind of like indicative to being low rank. You're still a little kid. And then and then the Yuzen Vong did actually speak common, basic. Basic. Why did I say common? It's basic. I don't know. The common tongue is what I was going for, but we're talking basic. basic. Come, Miko, he heard the leader of the group say, and he was surprised that these disfigured barbarians, I keep calling them barbarians, Spoke his language. It's time to die. Jason stopped to spite himself. Leave him alone. He's just going to fake it again. <laughs> You're just going <laughs> to fake it again. They don't mean it, Miko. <laughs> I mean, that was part of their tactic was to fake know, killing him. I know, him, but, but it's just funny that she's yelling. Leave him alone. He didn't do anything. Miko. But she ended her speech abruptly with a grasp. With a gasp. With a grasp. <laughs> gasp. As the warriors beside her doubled her over with a heavy punch to her gut. Gut punch. Blood rush. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> the gut punch caused a blood rush. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you thug. The warrior screamed at Jason again. Jason looked up and noted that the warrior's eyes had widened in surprise. Boss sauce, see? Sauce, sauce. Pointing to his belt. Where his lightsaber hung. Why didn't he hide the lightsaber? I mean, I, there he's a cocky many Jedi. places to hide it, but still. Yeah. Jason glanced right to see the two leaders hoisting Miko up uh, brutally. Brutally. <laughs> brutally. They segmented that word. Then glanced back to the left to see two of the four over there coming towards him, demanding to know what it was that he carried on his belt. They still think he's using Vong. Yeah. It's crazy. Stupid. He pulled the lightsaber free and extended the glowing blade, cutting a sweep and slashing, slashed through the nearest warrior's knee, severing the leg and dropping him with an agonizing howl. Go, Miko! Jason, do you think that's how Jason sounds? Go, Go Miko! Go, Miko! It's like Pokemon. I choose you, Miko! Oh, you shut your mouth. Miko, you splash. <laughs> it's <laughs> not effective. Jason prompted his fellow Jedi, but he knew before he even looked that way that Miko didn't have much, if any, fight left in him, and that he was a broken shell of a man. This was, was Jason's, Jason's fight. In scene. <laughs> Mortal Kombat. I, I, I think <laughs> I want to hear, uh, hear the uh, blade. <laughs> what do you think about that one? I think it also has to have a little bit of Kill Bill. Wink. Wink. Oh Wink. That was so stupid. I'm sorry, I'm not. I mean, I, I do like I Tarantino <laughs> films, but there are some that are just It was kind of terrible. So, uh, yeah, what would you think of this chapter, man? It's, it's kind of heavy. Interesting. It's interesting. It's some really goofy stuff going on with it, but at the same time, very good chapter. And I thought I'm just so too. Excited to finish it. I'm so excited to finish this book. No, well, we're getting to the end. You know, then we'll have to f- pick a different series. Obviously, it's too bad they didn't make a full series out of this this book. It'd be really nice. Mm. How are they gonna? You know what I think we should do? How are they gonna destroy do? the Yuzen Vong that quickly? We only got a couple. Chapters well, I think left. what we should do is we should just read the um, novelization of Episode One. This is pod racing. Misa no like that idea. God, we have so many books. There are 19 books in this series. We're going to be reading for 20 years. It's going to be great. Yep. So, so what else? What else do we have to talk about with these fine fans who drug them through everything from from, seri- from uh, serious topics to what weird stuff we're doing and then an awesome chapter? All what I else got we to, have say, to say, if you guys are ever going to start talking to me, at least make it during Christmas. What are you doing for Christmas? I just want to know. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Are you, what kind of hammer are you having? Are you having Spiral? Because I'm sorry for your luck. Oh, my God. If you are. No, but in all seriousness, though, uh, we would like to hear from you guys. Uh, again, 
Facebook is is up and running. Post some memes and some other stuff in there, and eventually we'll we'll expand that out into other things as we get more people mm-hmm. joining. Uh, you can send us an email tcplanpodcast at gmail dot com. Again, you know, let us know how you got into Star Wars. What was your fondest Star Wars memory? What what makes Star Wars your franchise? Yeah, and, we kind of uh, talked a little negative earlier about the Last Jedi, so it we would did get really. A uh, it happens, but it would really be nice to counterbalance that with some discussions For sure. about what made you love it. Exactly, and those are a couple mediums where you can do that. You can also check out Patreon. Uh, we have our Dinner with the Patron series on there. If you would like to contribute to the podcast, that's a great place to do it, and you know some reward tiers. And we'll build that up as time goes by as well. But uh, you know, for now, a little extra content for your consideration. So I think we better cut it off now so we can go watch uh, watch Baker lead the Browns into the future and, uh, you know, watch him destroy the National Football League for the next 15, 20 years. What do you think? Shut your mouth. Maybe next year? No, <laughs> yeah, no, <okay>. yeah. <laughs> But anyway, folks, we greatly appreciate you stopping by and listening to another episode. Um, And I hope that you have a great rest of your week. And as always, until next time, may the force.